Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We're excited to have over 200 registered attendees for today's webinar, which is eligible for one credit from the ACI. Let's get started by giving one lucky attendee a Webinar Wednesday t-shirt for answering this trivia question. Today's sponsor, Philips US, US location, is based in Massachusetts. What is the name of the Ivy League College based in Cambridge? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard. While you're answering, I want to invite everyone to, um, to say the date for our full MD Expo, which will be taking place next month at the Hilton Baltimore Inner Harbour Hotel. From October the 17th to the 19th, we look forward to you joining us for three days of learning, networking, and the latest advances in medical technology, products, and services. Registration is open, and more details can be found at mdexposhow.com. Okay, and let's see who the winner of our fabulous webinar Wednesday t-shirt is, and it is Katie White. Congratulations, Katie. The correct answer is Harvard. A webinar Wednesday, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Philips. Philips has built a reputation for best-in-class support that's right-sized to your needs. Ultrasound Services has ranked number one for 26, in a, 26 years in a row, first in overall performance and 34 other categories based on customer rankings in the 2018 IMV Service Track Survey, which means you can expect our solutions work today and into the future. For more information, visit usa.philips.com. Our panel of presenters from Philips today are Stone Dupree, ultrasound technical trainer and developer, Mark Potts, senior service product manager, ultrasound, Terry Richardson, senior global product manager, and Jim Moran, North America service product manager, ultrasound. Jim, you may begin whenever you're ready. Well, thank you very much and welcome to Webinar Wednesday, everyone. The focus of today's session will be on streamlining your support workflow with remote access to your Philips ultrasound systems. Specifically, we will be giving you an overview of a software application called Philips Omnisphere. My name is Jim Moran, and I'm joined by my colleagues, Terry Richardson, Mark Potts, and Stone Dupree. Terry is gonna kick the program off today with a high level summary of how Omnisphere application addresses some of today's real healthcare challenges. And then Mark will briefly touch on how Omnisphere is connected to the database server and how it works. I'm gonna follow Mark with a brief two part overview of both Omnisphere applications, that's utilization optimizer and remote technical connect. And after the product overview section, Stone Dupree will take over the heavy lifting with a demonstration and some tips and tricks for using Omnisphere Remote Technical Connect. And finally, we'll wrap up with a question and answer section. And so thank you for join, uh, joining for today's Webinar Wednesday. Let's get started. Thanks, Jim. So uh, this is Terry. And something that we've found in our travels and talking with our customers is uh, we learned that they actually face many of the same challenges, including capturing ultrasound utilization data, but having no real way to turn that data into actionable insights. Um, as many of you know, this data is currently available on our systems and has been for some time. However, in order to access it, you physically have to go to each system you have to print a report, then collate that data by hand. And if you're going to look at any statistics or any, any correlations there, you're probably gonna put it into Excel and, and make some charts. It's very, very cumbersome. And no one I personally have talked to has any time for doing that, which pretty much makes the data virtually unusable if you have more than a couple of systems in your institution. Another challenge we found that was common was helping our customers with the ways to improve their ultrasound uptime and streamline their support workflow. We heard the need for a scalable solution to take on these operational challenges, and this is where Philips Omnisphere can help. So let me describe in a little more detail what Omnisphere is. 
Omnisphere is a software only platform that connects you to your Philips Epic or Affinity ultrasound systems and their data. Omnisphere consists of two applications to aid in optimizing your ultrasound business. First one is Utilization Optimizer, and as the name suggests, it's a tool that offers a comprehensive view of the Philips ultrasound utilization data. The second one is Remote Technical Connect, which enables internal biomed or clinical engineering departments to expedite technical support to eligible Philips ultrasound systems. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an important point about Omnisphere. The data that Omnisphere uses is not sensitive patient data. That's a question that comes up quite often with today's security concerns, but rather system usage data and all of the data remains contained within your institution's network. Since this is a tool designed to support you and your workflow, Philips cannot access your systems through Omnisphere. Now, I'm going to transfer the conversation over to Mark Potts for a moment, who's going to give you a brief overview of how Omnisphere works technically. Mark? Thanks, Terry. Hi, everybody. So, how does Omnisphere work? Omnisphere, as Terry pointed out, consists of your ultrasound systems, the, the Omnisphere server application and the applications that connect you to your systems. First, you install the server application. Uh, we call it a server because it's a central data processing engine and database. That's really the brains of the solution. Uh, this connects the ultrasound systems with the applications. This can be installed on a Windows PC, Windows 7, or Windows 10, or it can also be installed on a Windows server machine. Uh, 2008 R2, 2012 R2, or Server 2016. Once you have your server installed, you'll then install the Omnisphere Administration Tools application, which is an application that allows you to uh, configure your sites, your systems, and your users. This will have an, an administrative privileges. Um, it has the ability to give everybody, everybody permissions to see various sites, various systems, depending on how you want to configure your enterprise. Once your um, administration tools are installed, you next connect all of your ultrasound systems. This is done simply by going to the ultrasound system, pointing it at the Omnisphere server. Uh, you just simply enter the IP address of the machine that you installed the server on and connect to it. Once you have your systems installed, you then will install the applications, as Terry described, the Utilization Optimizer or the Remote Technical Connect on a Windows machine where you want to use it. So in your shop, in your office, wherever, the, wherever you would like to use that information, you can install it on that machine. Then you just simply point the application to the, the server where you install the, the Omnisphere server application, and then you are ready to go. Uh, next, I'll be handing it off to uh, Jim Moran um, to get a little more detail about the applications themselves. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, allow me to explain a little bit, of, a little bit more about Utilization Optimizer. So the power of Utilization Optimizer, how it dives deep into the data, providing organized dashboards of information about the entire Philips ultrasound ecosystem that is connected to Omnisphere. And these dashboards are customizable and can generate useful insights through reports. It can, re it can produce reports like the example report shown here that displays different graphs with the transducer data drilled down to the serial number level, which is unique. And here's another example screenshot of a dashboard view potential in Utilization Optimizer. There's a selection of various graphs for different views of data, and you can customize dashboards to show the graphs you want to see, and you can save the different view. Now, some ways Utilization Optimizer can help you include 
providing you with the ability to manage operational efficiency and usage while enabling more actionable business decisions around resource and asset planning, budgeting, and equipment or transducer needs. And now let me dive just a little bit deeper into the remote technical connect application of Omnisphere. This application provides clinical engineers with a tool to have remote access to Philips ultrasound systems. And from this application on their computer, they can remote into any system that is connected to their Omnisphere server and with a virtual control plan, panel and keyboard perform tasks without having to walk or drive to the location, which is a great time saver. Remote Technical Connect allows in-house technicians to identify and solve maintenance issues on their Philips Epic and Affinity ultrasound systems from a remote location. All you need is a connection to the VPN. In fact, Remote Technical Connect allows a biomedical engineer to remotely resolve over 70% of typically requested ultrasound tasks. And those are tasks such as managing system configurations, viewing and transferring error logs, running system diagnostics or exporting diagnostic log files. Clinicians can also request support directly from the ultrasound machine. So if they're working on the system and get an error message, they can send a request from the machine. The request is sent to Remote Technical Connect for biomeds to review and respond accordingly. And to further enhance productivity, a designated user will get an email alert when a new service request comes in. What that does is it eliminates the need for them to waste time checking multiple times a day. Remote Technical Connect's key benefit enables your technical support staff with the remote tools needed to improve the efficiency and uptime of their connected ultrasound systems while streamlining support workflow, resulting in higher system availability. Better stated, less downtime. So we're at a point in the webinar where I want to pause since we've just gone through Omnisphere, both Utilization Optimizer and Remote Technical Connect. And we've also gone over how it works with Mark. So I'm just going to pause and check to see if there are any questions out there coming in. Has there been anything in the chat box? I don't see anything yet, Jim. OK. Well, that's great. I just wanted to pause and make sure if there was anything coming in that we would address them now, because now I'm going to turn it over to Stone Dupree. Stone is going to share how to set up and remote into Epic and Affinity ultrasounds and offer a few tips to make servicing your systems easier. All right. Thank you, Jim. And uh, while I uh, transition here, I uh, just want to introduce myself quickly. Uh, my name is Stone Dupree. I have uh, been working in this industry for almost 30 years. Uh, the last 16, I've been with Philips Ultrasound. Uh, 13 of those years, I was a uh, Philips uh, field service engineer. And the last three, I have had the privilege of being a trainer here in the Cleveland Training Center where I'm located. Uh, today, I am going to show you a few things about Omnisphere. And uh, we're going to take a look at uh, quickly the administration tools. So how do you set up your systems to work with the Omnisphere tool? And then after that, we'll take a look at uh, some of the tools that are within the Remote Technical Connect. And how can you log into your ultrasound system? Uh, how uh, do you uh, run a diagnostic remotely? Also, how do you handle the error logs? And what can you do with that? And I've also got a, a couple of extra little tips and tricks I'll throw in there for you as well. And then we'll wrap up with uh, just a, a quick uh, bird's eye view of the uh, utilization an optimizer and uh, give you a little more detail on uh, what uh, Jim was, was just referring to. Uh, and with that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start. And the first thing we're going to look at is that administration uh, tool, which is in the Omnisphere suite. And you'll see our desktop here momentarily. And I'll click on the administration tools. 
and of course uh, we'll log in. Uh, when you first initially set up uh, the uh, program, you'll have a default administrator account and you can go in and change that. And of course uh, that will be in this tool and then you can set up as many uh, users and administrators as you need. You can see we've got uh, three panels here. We've got users, sites, and systems. Users is, of course, uh, your administrators and anybody who can access uh, the uh, either the data through utilization reports or the remote technical connect or any of the above. Sites is going to be uh, any facility that you have ultrasound systems. So whether it be uh, your home uh, facility or a remote clinic or a remote uh, a facility somewhere, uh, you would uh, add those in. And in addition, you would also have uh, their departments within those. And then third, we have the systems where we would uh, put in uh, our uh, systems that uh, we want to communicate with. Uh, first thing we'll take a look at is how do we add a user and we'll click on that add user button and then you see the required fields are first name, last name, email, phone number, and you have to create a username and a password. And as this gets filled out, uh, you'll see a, another section down below uh, that says uh, applications. And uh, these are the three tools within the Omnisphere suite uh, that you would allow people access to. So you can select one, uh, two, or all. And then additional uh, to that, you can also uh, allow access to only certain departments or certain facilities. Uh, so uh, that way it uh, limits uh, who can uh, see the particular information. And then of course we'll click save once we're done. And then uh, we'll add a site. And of course we'll click on that add site button at the top. And then we'll type in a name. And you can see here we have the address and then county, uh, state, province, city, and zip code. Uh, notice that the only country, state, and city are required fields besides name. And then on top of that, you'll add a contact person uh, as well as a department name. And you can add multiple departments in here as well. As you can see, I've got this sped up. I wish I could type that fast. And then click Add for the department, and then click Save. So now we've added a site. Now, there are two ways that uh, we can um, add a system. We can manually put in the system by adding in the serial number, model number, um, software version number, and then also uh, what site it's associated with as well as the department. Um, I'm not going to do that here because there is a quicker way, as you can see in the note. Uh, there is an easier way, which is going to be shown in the next section, which is uh, registration. Um, but uh, you can see the different fields here, and I'll cancel out of that here momentarily. You can see where I can select the site or the department. And I'm clicking our clinical ed lab. And clinical education and then I can click save if I had other information in there. Uh, one thing else I'm going to show you here is I will click on a system. I can also edit any of the information from the screen as well. Additionally, if you uh, register the system automatically, which we'll look at later on, uh, we'll have to go in and add the site and department, which we'll see momentarily. Also, I can add a particular location. So if I have a system that uh, uh, resides only in one location, I can um, notate it there. This is very useful if you have multiple systems. And that's uh, the end of this particular section. And then in the next section, we'll take a look at that registering the system. Uh, Mark made a reference to this earlier. And what we'll do is uh, once uh, the Omnisphere is set up and we have our ultrasounds on our network, and uh, we would go into uh, the support key you can see here it here on the uh, video and I press the support key on the control panel and I'll have a video showing exactly uh, what's going on so I'm pressing that uh, support key and that takes us into what we call the PSC the Philips support connect and this is the tool where we can access all of uh, the uh, configuration information for the system as well as uh, ultimately log into our tools and it takes just a moment to log in and you can see I have a series of buttons. The first one at the top I want to look for is the remote services. And of course, this is assuming I'm already set up on the network. And then I'm going to click on Omnisphere, which is in that column on the left, and then configure server. Once I do that, I want to make sure the enable Omnisphere box is checked. And then also I need to make sure I have the IP address for the server location where Omnisphere is loaded to. 
And I'm going to type in uh, that IP address, which I've already done here, and then I will click save. And what will happen is the ultrasound will reach out to the Omnisphere server and identify itself, and hopefully uh, the uh, Omnisphere uh, will communicate properly, and uh, which uh, is normally the case, and uh, eventually we'll get a uh, message here of success, as you can see here. Now, I do want to note that uh, if you want to remote into your ultrasound system, so if you want to run those diagnostics remotely, uh, you want to make sure that you have uh, checked in that radio, radio button there, either enable remote desktop or schedule. And a schedule just means that uh, it'll auto you can remote in only during that uh, certain time frame, as you can see uh, in the boxes below the red box. Also, additionally, you want to make sure that uh, it, you have uh, set the automatically accept connections if you want to just automatically be able to log in, or if that is unchecked, uh, then you can tr attempt to remote in, but a user or somebody on the other end has to accept that connection. So we do have the ability to uh, keep that uh, secure for you and your users. Okay. I got ahead of myself here, I believe. Here we go. So what happens on the registration, uh, on the administration side, on the administration tools? So uh, we're going to uh, log in into our administration tool and then see what happens. And of course, I'm going to log in, put my username and my password. Click log in and we'll see it load. And then we should uh, see our familiar screen here, the user sites and systems. Now, it will uh, update itself automatically, but if you're impatient like me, I want to click the refresh button. And notice we have a yellow exclamation mark now. So this is a new system that has been added to our database. And what we'll have to do is click on this to be able to add uh, the department and site. But at this point, that's all we have to do. We know the ultrasound is actually communicating with Omnisphere. We just have to tell the administration tool where this is actually physically located. So I'm going to put this system in the clinical education lab and that particular department and then click save. And then now I can communicate freely with the system as long as it's online. And before we go to the next section, I just want to check with uh, uh, my friends back in Bothell if we have any questions. We'll give it a check. I don't see any questions yet, Stone. Okay, awesome. All right, so how do we connect remotely to the ultrasound system? So what we'll do is we'll go into the RTC, the Remote Technical Connect. And again, we've already set up users and uh, whoever has the access rights to the RTC can log in. As you can see here, I'm using a different username and password. And then uh, you'll notice here that we have a screen that comes up called the Quick Connect. And you can see I've got three systems listed here. Uh, one is offline, two is online, as you can indicate, see by the system status indicators. And then I have uh, some green buttons, retrieve logs, which we will look at here in a little bit, and then connect. Connect is what we will uh, click on to be able to connect to one of these systems. And we'll see that uh, the system will start communicating with the ultrasound. And we'll see a little progress bar that comes up and it takes a moment or two. And then we should see a uh, blank field and a couple of uh, panels here momentarily. And here we are. So I am actually looking at the, the ultrasound uh, what you would see on the main monitor if I was physically in front of the ultrasound. I'm actually looking at this through my laptop uh, communicating to the system. Now, I will tell you that if I had a probe plugged in, uh, I might see a scan field. And when I recorded this, unfortunately, I did not have a probe. Uh, but to be able to remotely connect in, I would, uh, I'm already remotely connected in, I apologize. Uh, we would click on the view virtual controls. And we now have the ability to work the controls as if we were physically in front of the machine. So the touch panel portion, I have uh, access to those controls, and then the control panel. I have a virtual uh, control panel, so uh, I don't have to be in front of the control panel or have somebody on the phone saying, hey, can you press this button? Um, 
So if I had a probe plugged in, I could also switch modes. I could change from the 2D mode to the M mode. I could adjust my TGCs, my, my gains. So if I maybe if I've got an artifact issue that, that my user is complaining about, um, uh, I could uh, kind of look at it with them to see what's happening. Uh, but you can see here I'm pressing on that support key, and that will take me into the Philips Support Connect. Now, uh, this system uh, has a high, uh, very high resolution on its screen, so that's why we have to scroll over. Uh, many of the tools, you will need a first responder account, and so you uh, scroll over and click on the login, uh, click on the first responder radio button, and then type in your username and password. And this is how you would log into the system. Now, many of the tools that aren't uh, behind the first responder, you still have access to. Now, there's two ways that we can gather logs from the uh, Epic or Affinity system. The first way is uh, you or your user can upload the logs to the Omnisphere server, and that way uh, they're available to be able to send off to either the remote services engineer or the field service engineer. And uh, just as a reminder, we, we have pressed the support key on the control panel, so somebody is actually in front of the system. And the default that comes up in the PSC is that system management that I'm pointing to. And then now we would click on log management. You'll notice we have two buttons here, log viewer and export logs. Uh, so click on the export logs portion, and then we will click on the drop down window and click on Omnisphere. Make sure that include diagnostics is checked and click OK. Now what's going to happen is it's going to compress all these files. It's a ton of information that gets exported out. And it'll take, uh, oh, maybe about 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds at the very most uh, to be able to compress this and send this to a predetermined spot on the Omnisphere server. And then you can do with the logs uh, as you need to from that side. And that's how you would export those if you have somebody in front of the system. Now alternately, we can retrieve those remotely, which is a great feature of the RTC in the Omnisphere. So just a reminder, we are uh, logged in virtually into the ultrasound at this point, and you can see that quick connect in the RTC. You can see I've got two systems uh, that are in my database. I have one system that is online, and I have a button to the right there that says retrieve logs. I pointed that out earlier. And I've clicked on that button. Now you notice I have a message here that says Omnisphere server has logs from 828. So apparently I've retrieved the logs previously and it's asking me do I want to save these or do I want to capture a fresh set of logs. So I'm going to choose to capture a new set of logs and I'm going to click on that retrieve system logs button. And then we should see a progress bar much like we just saw earlier. We just don't see the information uh, down below it, like we saw in the ultrasound itself, but it's doing the same thing. It's compressing the information and it's uploading it to our server. Now, in this instance, uh, on the Omnisphere server side, on the retrieve log side, we have the option of where do we want to send these logs to. And you can see here I'm choosing a location, this PC, and a, uh, a folder that I had set up earlier. And then I can go into um, and uh, see that uh, those files are available and then I can forward those on. I will tell you that unfortunately through Omnisphere, you do not have the ability to read logs. However, we do have the ability to remote in, as we'll see in the next section, and review the logs remotely uh, through the ultrasound system, as if we were physically in front of the system. And that, as I said, is the next section. So just a reminder, we have uh, logged in remotely. And we're going to press that support key on the virtual control panel and go into the PSC, the Philips Support Connect. Do you have to be logged in as a first responder to be able to review the logs? So that's a very important note. So username and password, log in. And system management is our default view, but we want to make sure that that is highlighted and log management, as you can see here. And you'll notice now that because we're logged in, we do have three buttons available to us. We have log viewer, export logs, and delete logs. Uh, the log viewer, uh, when we're logged in, gives us the ability to see more than just the informational logs. If we're, if we're not logged in as first responder, all it is is just informational logs. It takes a moment for the logs to pull in. 
And then I have the ability to uh, filter uh, all of my errors. And what we teach here in the Cleveland Training Center in our training is the two things you want to look for first when you're looking at error logs is those fatal errors and the actual error level. Uh, you can see that uh, I'm checking those boxes and then I'll filter that. Fatal is usually associated with uh, the actual numbers. So if the user calls in and says, hey, I'm getting a 605 error code, that would be associated with a fa uh, fatal error. And then the actual errors will give us additional information of maybe what's failing or what didn't communicate. And we can double click on any of that information, as you can see here, and we've got uh, some additional information that will come up. And we've got a description there that uh, may or may not uh, be able to give us some additional information. And then you can see the arrows at the top uh, left and right uh, that I can scroll through and uh, go forward and backwards in time to see uh, what's happening in that process. And then I can go back later on if I need to and look at those informational logs or maybe some additional information that's uh, telling me uh, what's happening, what was building before uh, uh, this particular uh, issue had occurred. And we'll log out of this. Also, you can uh, uh, search for uh, terms. So maybe a particular term had come up in the error code. Maybe the user didn't catch the actual number, but maybe it had uh, some wording with it, uh, front-end error, or maybe fatal error, uh, or uh, I'm not sure. What, I can't think of a good example off the top of my head. Uh, but you have the ability to search in there. You also have the ability to uh, scroll through any moment in time uh, to find other errors. Maybe the error has been repeating itself uh, for a while. Uh, a great feature of the Remote Technical Connect is running the hardware or diagnostics remotely. So again, we are logged in virtually. And so we've pressed that uh, virtual support key on a virtual control panel, gone into the PSC, the Philips Support Connect. Uh, we have logged in uh, as first responder. To be able to run the hardware test and be able to see every test, we have to be logged in as first responder. There is an alternate test. It's a, a system test that is a pass-fail that we can possibly run as well. But you can see at the top there, that first arrow that was just up, uh, we've clicked on the test slash utilities button. And then now we're going to select the hardware test button. And we're going to get a message that's asking to make sure that the uh, probes are disconnected. So whenever you run the hardware test, make sure your probes are disconnected. You can potentially get a false positive. I have accidentally run them with the probes on without problems, but it can happen. Uh, notice our system is checked by default. Uh, if I were to click that run button that was highlighted uh, a while ago, uh, that would run the full system test. That's actually the test I would recommend uh, on a first pass when you're first looking at a system with a potential problem. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to run our display module uh, test for the sake of time. It uh, only takes about uh, maybe 30 or 40 seconds. So you, uh, you see that uh, I've uh, checked that box and um, um, clicked run and the test is running now. And you can see that I've got different line items. So it's the different tests within uh, that particular uh, module that are being tested. And I have uh, a columns there for uh, passed and failed. So if I've repeated this test, um, I can see how many times it passed, how many times it failed. So very useful. Um, request support is a feature that your users have the ability to let you know, hey, I'm having an issue with my system. Um, and uh, the first thing you need to make sure that you do is set up users uh, that they can send the messages. So this is uh, set up through, you can set it up remotely. Uh, in this case, we've gone into the actual uh, sitting in front of the system, pressing that support key. And then we're looking for the request support button at the top, which is a third from the right. And then to set up and add users, we click on Create Request. And you can see that Manage Users button. And then you can see that uh, if we need to edit a name, we would click the drop down, but I don't have anybody in here yet. So I'm going to click Add. And I'm going to add uh, Jim Kirk as a, a user. Uh, yes, I am a Star Trek fan. And then we'll add his phone number, his email address, and then that Connect uh, Via is uh, you can. Uh, have the system alert you to uh, whether they uh, need to be contacted by phone, email, or both. And then I'm going to quickly add another one. And we'll put in Albert Einstein. Who knew he was uh, uh, so talented? And we'll finish him up here and select him to be connected through email. 
you can click save. And so now I have a couple of the users. So uh, with that, once they are set up, and by the way, uh, when you do a backup of your systems, those users do get backed up and imported back in. If you, uh, and also can be uh, uh, sent across to other systems if they're at the same software level. So we are in that create request window that we were looking at earlier, but now we can type in a message. You want to make sure the Omnisphere radio button is clicked. Uh, you'll notice it does say uh, Philips also. Uh, if you are connected to the Philips remote server, that is uh, where you are connected to the outside world, connected to uh, the Philips uh, server, uh, wherever it uh, is, resides, I believe it's in the Netherlands. Um, that way the field engineers are able to remote in if you allow that access. Uh, so they have the, the option to send the message to Philips or send it to the Omnisphere server. That's only if you're set up to PRS. But you can see here that um, uh, Al is uh, putting in a message here. He's getting that pesky filter, uh, clean filter or reset filter message. And everybody seems to forget how to reset and then we'll submit. And you see here the request for support has been queued for sending later. So what happened here is the system is actually not plugged into the network and so it's sitting in the queue. So I can go in and look at history and see that it is in the queue and once that is connected back to the network it will automatically send that message and then we'll have a status change indicating that it's been sent. Now what happens on the RTC side? So we're into the remote technical connect, we're sitting there working away, and then all of a sudden we'll have a message saying, hey, there's a new message. So you can see here I'm actually looking at the quick connect and a new request is available. And it's asking if I want to refresh the screen, so I do. And then at the top I can click on uh, request. And then from here I can see what's come in. So you can see on the left-hand column, I've got a pending message from Jim Kirk. He sent a message to me. And in the main field, I can see that message since it's highlighted. If I had other messages, I could scroll through those and look at the different messages and see what their different statuses were. So here we can see that uh, Jim has that filter message as well. And what I need to do is accept the message before I can add any notes. Once I've accepted it, I can add some notes, and let's say that I've already uh, talked to Jim, and I told him uh, how to uh, go in to the PSC and reset the uh, filter message, and then I would click, uh, click Add. And then that uh, creates a history, as you can see on that uh, uh, bottom section under the Add. And then once I've completed, I do have to put in notes once I've completed, and I'll type in Close Request, Instructed Customer, and then I will uh, click complete. And with that, uh, once I'm done, I can click archive so it's no longer in that uh, uh, queue on the left. Now what I can do is I can go in and I can look at the old messages. And you can see I've got a few here. So we'll take a, a quick look at that last message. And you can see here that I've got the history at the bottom. I've also got the original note from, from Jim indicating that the filter message is appearing. And um, I can uh, see the history of that call. Um, and before I uh, continue to the next section, do we have any uh, uh, questions, guys? Yeah, Stone, um, I have answered a couple online, but there's one uh, related to your content. Um, did Stone say we are able to restore the backup to multiple different ultrasounds? It is it is possible, yes. You want to make sure that you are at a, a similar software revision because um, you're not you're not restoring the actual license options. You'll be restoring um, the actual uh, user customizations and. Um, uh, you want to be aware that when you do restore, you have the option of the items that you import in. So you want to make sure that you're not importing in the networking information because otherwise you may accidentally have a duplicate IP. But yes, it is possible. I'd like to elaborate. I'd like to elaborate on that. Yeah. So using Omnisphere doesn't allow you to give to have the option to back up the system remotely and then push the restore to multiple systems. Um, but Thank, thanks for clearing that up. Yes. If you do back up the system, as Stone's saying, you can restore that across multiple systems to share those settings. Thanks. I, I can elaborate I didn't a little think bit. about it from that angle, Mark. Thank you. Uh, just another point to that, as Stone pointed out, you can do everything with the remote 
Tenable Connect that you can do as standing in front of the system. So theoretically, if somebody put a USB uh, device into the system, you could remotely click the backup button and it would it would back it up to that USB device. Um, and then if, again, if you stuck it in and then restored it remotely, you, you could technically do that, but that workflow really isn't um, a, a good thing to do. It's not efficient. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, appreciate that. Thank you. So Stone, Jim here. There was another question. Is first responder contract a per site or per system contract? Do you know the answer to that? It's my, under it's my understanding that it is per system. Yeah, that's what my understanding was too. I just wanted to see if we were both um, in sync on that. I defer to you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's how I remember it from the field, and uh, that's from everybody I've talked to. That's 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 uh, how it's set up. So we actually have another question that's come in. Stone, you're generating all the questions now. Um, is I usually there do. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way to chat with Phillips? remote support through Omnisphere while remoting into the systems for error code analysis, et cetera, instead of calling to create a case? No. Not, yeah, I was going to say, Mark, Mark will know more than I on that one. Not through, not through Omnisphere. Um, so you would still have to make that call or, or contact your field service engineer. If you do have a service contract and connect to the Philips remote services, you can do a remote support request through the system and have Philips connect to the system while you're connected with Omnisphere, that's a possibility as well. But there's not a direct um, uh, line to Philips through Omnisphere. Again, Omnisphere is a solution that is behind your firewall. Philips has no access to it remotely or whatsoever. This is a solution that is designed for the customer, um, you know, to protect all of their data and have their connectivity local to their enterprise. Uh, let's see, another one came through. Sorry, Stone, we're, we're on a roll here. Um, That's okay. If, <laughs> if, for example, I need the power supply block for some Philips ultrasound system and I send the problem to you, what happens then? Okay, can you read that again? I don't know if I got all, all of that. Yeah, so uh, it looks like if they have a problem, for example, um, if they need a power supply block for a system, and they send the case or the problem in, uh, what happens then? Looks like if they're creating a service call. Yeah, at that point you'd be creating some sort of uh, work order either through your FSC or through the call center. Uh, and then uh, you know the, the, whoever, whoever it is you contact, whether it be the call center or the FSC, they would be making the arrangements to uh, send the, uh, the, the, the power module uh, to you. I hope, I, hope, I hope that answers the question. Okay, it looks like we, we've exhausted questions for now. So I would say roll on. I know, that's great. That, mean, that means people are listening, that's great. <laughs> no, that's, it's awesome. All right, well with that, uh, I'm going to give the bonus power tip of the day. Um, if you happen to have the remote monitoring uh, value added service uh, turned on on your system, uh, remote monitoring it gives us several trigger points that uh, can be uh, looked at remotely. And uh, of course, we have to look at this uh, through, well, we can look at it physically through the front of the machine if we're standing in front of it, or we can look at it remotely. Uh, for the information uh, to be useful to us, we do have to log in as the first responder. And uh, what this is, is several points, uh, the temperature, voltage, uh, hard disk space, fan speed, how many uh, faults, which is critical errors, and uh, there are in a 24-hour period, and abnormal shutdowns there are in a 24-hour period. <laughs> so you can see I've clicked on that monitoring tab at the very top, and we've got uh, these green uh, indicators. And if any of those are yellow or red, that means that something has happened within uh, these particular uh, areas that we're monitoring. Now, I can create a report. Um, you know, if I clicked on the show report, I would have seen it, or I can look at a graph. Now, what I have to do is I have to click get data uh, to get this information to import it into this tool. Now, if let's say that I've got a maybe an ongoing uh, temperature issue 
uh, with a particular component on, on a system, I can track and see what's happening with that. So I uh, would click on category temperature. Let's say it's on my front end. Maybe I've got a concern with my controller board, which is the ACB that I've clicked. There are two FPGAs on that board. And then I would click show graph. And you can see here, it's maybe a little hard to see, but you can see I've got a nice little uh, pattern there showing me the temperature of that ACB board. Alternately, maybe if I've got a different component that I'm concerned with, maybe it's a, a problem with uh, maybe voltage and temperature, um, you know, maybe uh, coordinating with each other somehow, I can put up a second graph and see if those two are tracking together. Uh, so, Remote monitoring, we have the ability to look at this information and see what's happening. Additionally, maybe you've got a, a series of systems that maybe your users are calling intermittently about, hey, this is over temping or something like that that's giving me the over temp alert. Um, you can go in and see these graphs and maybe it keeps spiking and you notice it corresponds with the same day that you've gone in there and cleaned the filter and you realize, hey, these guys aren't cleaning the filters like they should be. Uh, this is the kind of information that uh, you can draw from this. And uh, hopefully that's uh, helpful and, and benefit, beneficial for you. Um, so that's the end of the RTC section. I hope that uh, you've seen that uh, uh, how useful uh, this tool can be. Uh, this is very similar to, uh, it's not exactly what we do with the PRS, the Phillips Remote Server, but it's very similar to what I would do when I was in the field. I had a massive territory and I might be on one side of the state and I have a customer that uh, calls with a problem on the other side and if they're connected to the Phillips server, I would be able to remote in and maybe grab di uh, the error logs or run a diagnostic remotely and uh, it really saves you time and uh, uh, gives you the ability to um, maybe come in more prepared to the system or, or maybe it's just a configuration issue or maybe that they haven't uh, reset the patient database in a long time and you can go in and and if they're not willing to you know talk with you over the phone on how to reset it you can do it yourself remotely potentially uh, the last thing I'm going to look at is uh, we're going to take about three minutes uh, to take a little bit uh, deeper dive in the utilization optimizer. Uh, the charts that uh, Jim had shown earlier uh, were from uh, clinical education type systems. My systems are in uh, service training, so we don't do a lot of clinical education, of course. So uh, my, my data is going to be very limited, uh, but it gives you a little better idea of uh, what this is uh, can be used for. Uh, one of the things I like to uh, tell uh, the students who come through uh, about the utilization optimizer is this is a great tool that you can justify headcount, uh, you can justify the number of systems that you have, you can justify probes. Uh, so the first thing that uh, we're looking at is uh, the system status. So we're going to manually uh, request data uh, from one of the ultrasounds. You can see I've got one online. Alternately, you can set these up to uh, push the information out uh, at set intervals. And I'm going to request data. And that has uh, uploaded the uh, information for utilization. And uh, then I'll have to filter that information here momentarily. Uh, I do want to show you that you can alternately export that data to a thumb drive and add it in. Also, our dashboard that we're looking at, we can change the format of how it looks. And then what I'm going to do is I know that I've got uh, uh, two Epic CVXs uh, that uh, I have information on. So I'm just going to choose that. And you can see I can filter out institution, departments, model. To, so if I just want only Epic 7C information, I can. Uh, here I'm going to, I know my data, my data is just a little bit dated. Uh, so uh, putting the last six months and you can see I've got some graphs here. So you can see you got system usage, you got average system usage per day, number of exams per system. Uh, number of procedures per type uh, per system, the procedure mix, so how many OB studies did we do versus vascular studies maybe, uh, how much time each procedure took, and then we can click on any of these to drill down into some additional information. Uh, so you can see I'm going to click on that average system uh, per day, and you're going to see uh, idle time. So what this means is this is telling me my system was turned on but it was sitting there doing nothing. So you can see I was averaging about an hour a day in the month of June. Alternately, uh, uh, you can also generate some PDF reports, uh, which we'll see here momentarily. So you can see uh, we can get a report on the system usage. Uh, so whatever we filtered in, uh, we can get system usage. Uh, so, so 
total system usage, the average. Also, we can um, uh, average out, uh, or excuse me, filter out uh, just particular uh, specific systems. Okay. So maybe if I've got a concern if a system is being utilized or not, I can see that here. Uh, something else that's very handy is the transducer usage. So you can see I've got all these different probes in here. I can tell uh, how frequently these were used. This is really handy if you've got a probe, let's say maybe an endocavity probe that has to be disinfected in between patients. And maybe we're seeing between the disinfection time and the actual use time, we figure out it's probably at 80, 90 percent utilization. And Maybe a good idea to get a second probe in, or maybe you're about to make a purchase of a more epic ultrasound systems, and you can see that uh, the linear probe, maybe you've got an L9 that's maybe getting used maybe 20% of the time. Well, we want to make sure we don't add a uh, uh, add in another linear probe for those other systems that we're purchasing, because obviously we're not using it, we're not utilizing it. But you can see here uh, the different types of studies, and then also uh, who has uh, referred uh, the studies. Um, and that is the end of my presentation, guys. So I will switch back over to our Stone. Thanks a lot. You did a fantastic job, I want to say. And uh, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll finish up here with a few few words. Um, so um, you can advance the slide one more time. There we go. So, uh, so, so you'll notice on, on, on this slide that there's a link, and uh, we know you can't click here, um, so we've uh, shared that link with Linda, and hopefully she's going to paste it or share it some way so that you can click on that link and request more information on anything you know, we presented today. And uh, to close, you know, on behalf of my Phillips colleagues here, Terry, Mark, and Stone, um, remotely, we would like to thank you for your time, your attention on this webinar Wednesday topic, streamlining your support workflow with remote access to your Philips ultrasound systems. It was really our pleasure to host this event today and uh, look forward to taking some of your final questions if there's any up on the board. Great, thank you so much. Yes, we've got a couple that have come in. The first question is, uh, will Omnisphere work with all of my Philips ultrasound equipment? Uh, no, at this time it works with Epic and Affinity systems only. Okay, and what type of transducer information will Omnisphere give me? Stone, did you have that, that mark. listing there? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's deep information, but it, it does track the serial number of the transducer. A lot of people want to know that. It's not just the type of transducer. Right. So that's really kind of important um, right. for the audience to know. Usage of the transducer. So which system it was used on, how long it was used, who it was used by, the types of studies it was used for, and each down to the serial number level. You can also filter by type uh, if you're interested in looking at types of transducers and things like that. So it has a lot of filtering power for you to be able to kind of massage the dashboards and reports the way you'd like to see them. And actually just a note on that, Mark, thanks for prompting or reminding me of that. If there is not a chart or graph that meets your needs, the data in Omnisphere is exportable into Excel. So if you are at that next level and you need to uh, analyze this in a way that we haven't made a chart or graph for, uh, you can do that by just exporting the data and manipulating it yourself. Point. Okay, that, okay well, um, another question is, do I have to purchase both the utilization optimizer and the remote technical connect? No, it, it, is, it is set up so that you can have a purchase of one of each or both. So each one can be purchased separately or both can be purchased together. That's great. Um, well, I have chatted out the link you wanted me to chat to the audience. So attendees, you should receive that in your chat box. Um, 
that is about it for today, guys. So thank you all for a great and informative webinar. And thank you again to today's sponsor, Philips. Uh, just a reminder that the post-webinar survey and certificate process is now automated. Uh, the survey link will be included in the follow-up email, which you'll receive in about an hour's time. Once you've completed the survey, you'll be able to download your certificate immediately. And one lucky attendee will win an Amazon gift card just for completing the survey. If you have any questions, please contact us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. For more information about our upcoming webinars, please visit our website, webinarwednesday.live. So thank you again for joining us. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and hope to see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>